The wind whipped outside and around the window in the shabby old room where eight-year-old Esperus lay. It made lonely flickering light and shadows on that Saturday early morning. Esperus enjoyed the sound of the wind and the moans and whistles it made. She lay there for a while watching the shadows moving against the sheer dirty curtains. Rising from her small twin bed, she placed a gray matted wig on her head that she had purchased at the Goodwill with her allowance. Looking into the mirror, she cocked her head to one side and said to her reflection, God bless you, I'll pray for you. As she practiced her most sober expression, Taking off her wig and throwing it down, she ran barefoot outside to play in the windy, sunny day. As Esperus swung, she dreamed of how Liberace would show up at her house in a limousine, wearing a long white coat that was trimmed with fur and diamonds, and how he would smile and charm her mother. All the neighbors would see the limousine and know how special Esperus was if Liberace had come to call. Liberace would then tell her mother that he was taking Esperus with him and produce a beautiful girl's white dress trimmed with the same fur and jewels as his. Then Paul McCartney would show up in another limousine, run into her house and protest that Esperus would be going with him. Then the Beatles would jump on her bed in her bedroom. These are the things Esperus dreamed of as she swung on her stomach, digging a stick into the dirt and gravel beneath her as she did so. So she dropped her stick to go into the house to make herself a cup of instant Folgers coffee. She could hardly reach the stove, being small for her age, but she would get the job done. It was more convenient for her mother if she didn't have to get up to boil the water. Esperus put the kettle on the stove and turned it on high. Her favorite cartoon would be on soon, and she didn't want to miss it. She grabbed a banana that was allowed for breakfast. Bananas were cheap, you know. She was developing an aversion to bananas, but Mother said they were cheap, so she had to eat them. Oh well, better than nothing. On the way back into the house, she had stopped by her mother's purse on the chair by the door, shoving her hand into her mother's billfold she stole three quarters. Her mother had laundry quarters and had so many after all surely they wouldn't be missed. Her mother only gave her a quarter a week for allowance so Esperus felt justified in the taking. Mother was so cheap she wouldn't even spare an extra penny for the gum machine in town. She ran to her room and hid the quarters and ran out to switch on the TV. The tea kettle was screaming, so she poured herself a cup of Folgers Instant into one of the thick green mugs her mother kept and jumped up to snap off the stove, avoiding the burner with her arm. She grabbed her pencils and papers. She liked to draw horses while she was watching cartoons. Esperus loved to draw. Monday morning, Esperus put on her red plaid dress with the torn petticoat for school. She wore the dress every day and was very fond of it. She packed her Fred Flintstone lunchbox with a banana, yuck, and a sandwich of hot dog, bun, and ketchup while her mother stayed in bed. She was fond of the orange and black colors on her lunchbox, but she had wanted a Barbie lunchbox or a poodle lunchbox like the other girls. Her mother had found Fred Flintstone on sale, so she had purchased it for Esperus. Oh well, at least it wasn't a paper sack. She put on the white sweater that she wore every day too and she set herself out to walk the block down the hill to school. Esperus tried hard to always be punctual and hoped that the principal would take note of her exemplary behavior. Surely he had noticed how she arrived at school before the bell rang. She was learning what things are important and punctuality was important. Boys were important. Esperus liked the boys. Even though they were smelly and rude and shoved and teased, she wanted them to like her. But the boys liked the girls with the long, pretty hair, she noticed, and the pretty dresses. 
She didn't know how she knew, but she just knew. Aspirus couldn't wait to get to school to see the boy that she liked, Barth. She didn't know how she was going to get his attention. He actually liked Elspeth, but that didn't stop Esperus from dreaming and just knowing that Barth would like her one day. It was milk time for the fourth grade class of 1960, and Esperus untied the two cents her mother had given her for milk money from the old white embroidered scalloped edge hanky. Delicious cold chocolate milk was three cents. She didn't know why she was only permitted to get two cents from her mother for milk. Would an extra penny for the chocolate milk have killed her? But the joke was on her mother because Esperus liked white milk just as much and she expertly opened the little carton passed to her in exchange for two pennies by the milk monitor. That day's first sip of cold white whole milk was delicious and she settled in to listen to the golden words of her teacher reading the book Pilgrim's Progress to the class. The children were to put their heads down after finishing their milk, the boys competing on making rude slurping noises to signal the last of their milk carton. And finally, all quietly settled to listen. Esperus did so, putting her head down on the desk, bits of sunlight from the window dipping in the wind and dancing over her arm made a hypnotic and pleasant sight to the eye peeking out from the circled arms. The smell of old glue and old sweat emanated up from her desk as she listened to the teacher's reading of the sublime words and phrases of the book. Slew of despond and many more phrases which she did not understand floated over Esperus' soul like a glorious, mysterious balm. The reading was her favorite part of the day. Due to exhaustion from being kept awake the night before from the ghosts in her room, the sun that now warmed her, the words from the teacher's reading, and the sound of the wind caused her to be drawn down into an irresistible sleep. A bit of drool fell from the corner of her mouth to her desk as she lay in that warm nap of her own arms and the safety of the good words of Pilgrim's Progress. End of Part 1